After the story, we see what the characters do after the, well, the each of the representative episode, like like Ying does, where she pretty much getting a drug at the bar, and after the loss of the Wonderbolt Academy, well, this is also before the washout episode from season six. For Flim and Flam, it comes after a failed business, which could be super size the squeezy six thousand, and there's a lot old mouth, well, a mouthful to be said, and will. After Fluttershy's assertive class, well, you can guess how that went, and King Sombra, uh, who was pretty much stuck in the Crystal Empire as a horn, which I still question how he is alive and people just complain, oh it's not canon, I'm just like, in my opinion it's canon if it's not contradicts anything from the show in my opinion because hey what do you do between seasons well except season six no wait, seven and eight that's the only exception and also each of them have a common theme getting revenge on the main six so basically hope recruits the crystalis and the other people where they successfully infiltrated the crystal empire where where the fair is currently happening Eventually, the crystal heart was also stolen. Jeez, the equestrian have a really bad securities. Also, on the next issue, we actually see the backstory of all of the characters. Well, more exactly, Hope and Sombra. To keep it short, but Hope and Sombra saw the crystal and saw two parts of which it, Sombra is really bad and Sombra, is, Hope I meant, is really good. Eventually, over time, Sombra turned into a monster and pretty much froze Princess Amor and shattered them and spread along the Equestria land. You know, afterwards, he took up the upper hand and you know, the rest from the TV series from the Crystal Empire episode. Eventually, we also become aware about the Crystal Empire history, which is also is being destroyed by the Shadow Ponies, which is also called Umbram. And note, I did not derive Shadow Ponies from this. My Shadow Pony is to act legit to the shadows, while the other one is pretty much to the parallel to their own world stuff. Wibbly wobbly, how many wind me? You know. Eventually, Chrysalis let them out, and the friendship of magic helped Twilight out. Well, Twilight was in the let out only, but yeah, they were released for the final fight. The final fight begins. Their destiny is controlled by the person choice, not by an item or something that Sombra and Hope saw. As I said, Hope saw a princess, Sombra saw a monster. But they, but Hope explained to Sombra that she never became because she was determined to get Sombra back to the good side. So. Sombra decided to change it and went for the positive. So through the friendship of magic, Sombra have reformed back to a unicorn. And find out what happened to Princess and more, but this is another story. We probably never going to see them again. The positive of this story is tomorrow. So basically it is really deep and important. When someone tells you your destiny, it's not actually really sad at that point. You can agree or disagree with it. it if you disagree with it, change it for the better. L like the good Sombra in Sombra, he didn't see that. While Hope actually saw the hope in him, which would take a bit of time. But Sombra eventually became a tyrant, but Hope never became a princess. Which would eventually over time just to prove that it, as in over time as in this com to this comic that it, hope can change the destiny and hope is important yada 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 good but it's pretty important. Another thing is there's a new species and it's really amazing, but the downside is it's not that common though. But it's still really good. Like it is called Shadow Punch or Umbrim. Two names. And I'm not related to it. I have a shadow form, but I wouldn't consider it like that. Or speed, but not really. Also, 
the negative the backstory is pretty amazing too not negative so it, it pretty much dives into the backstory of some characters we never knew and even the crystal empire we have to take for reals at least for now So back to the story, well, Kingipa was ignorant, well, because she let Flim Flam blast her to the cage, and the uh, art throughout issue 35 were okay, it's good together, but it's not the best because uh, some of them just pretty much crumble, like, Unreal and Pony would not say you put them together, have a unique for one, or else it just pretty much shattered the feeling. And there's an abrupt ending of somebody like, oh, I'm getting reformed for a friendship. I would say, try something new and over time like, oh, I will get you back and they would become a, a separate comic adventure. But that's, I'm guessing they don't want that to happen. So overall, if you share my positives and negatives, I would consider this comic one of the most amazing and unique MLP stories as some you would see Sombra reforming in the end and it's more of Sombra based than oh he's here, he's a villain and he does nothing else. And this actually dive into the story of the character which is the backstory. Even though there's a few flaws, I could give it a pass because it's pretty reasonable and I can see what they're aiming for but I would not recommend doing that but still, I would give this 6 out of 5 nays. Okay, now I need to work out how to make more free time for my more reviews. How about a blog podcast? That would work. Shadow Oak is a podcast about Pop culture reviews, which is all pretty much Tokusatsu and MLP and some other things. Mm. So basically, it's where I do my media reviews, excluding the comics, because I'm already doing comics at the moment. I might do comics once in a while on it too, but it depends if you guys want it. But either way, I will see you later at the next review. Shadow Wizard out.